in the CFA level 1 curriculum, the time weighted rate of return and the money weighted rate of return is a very popular topic. So in this video, I will show you how time weighted rate of return and money weighted rate of return can be calculated using the Texas Instrument BA2 Plus Professional Calculator. To calculate that, we will see a simple case where at the beginning of 2019, you have invested $110 million and by the end of the year, the total value of your fund increased to $112 million. And at the end of the year, you also got dividend of $3 million and you have reinvested that dividend. Not only that, at that point, at the end of the 2019, December 31, you invested another $20 million. By the end of 2020, the total value of your fund increased to $150 million. You did not receive any dividend then. So how we can calculate the time weighted rate of return and money weighted rate of return. So let's see the time weighted rate of return first. So to calculate time weighted rate of return, there are two years here. So one is the year one and the another is year two. So at year one, you invested $100 million. By the end of the year, your 100 million increased to 112 million plus you have received three dollar three million dollar dividend so your total return will be 112 plus 3 minus 100 divided by 100 so it's 15 percent so in year one your total return is 15 percent what is the case in year two? So at year two, at the beginning of the month of January 1, 2020, your total investment value is 135. How that can be calculated? At the end of 2019, your total value was 112. You reinvested that $3 dividend and you invested another $20 million. So your total investment value at the beginning of 2020 is 135. By the end of the year, your total value of the portfolio became 150. So what's the rate of return in 2020? So your return in 2020 will be 150 minus 135 divided by 135 so let's calculate that to do that we will calculate in the way for example so let's start the calculation so let's press the on button so we have to calculate 150 minus 135 divided by 135 so 150 minus 135 divided by 135 so it's equal to 0.1111 so it's 11.11 percent so in year one your return was 15% and in year 2 your return was 11.11% which means at year 1 your 1 taka increased to 1.15 and in year 2 your 1 taka increased to 1.1111 in fact this can be calculated in another way for example in year 1 my total value of the portfolio including the dividend and the capital gain total value of the portfolio was 115 so what we will do 115 divided by 100 equal so it's 1.15 
and in year two my total value increased to 150 divided by the beginning value was 135 so 150 divided by 135 so it was 1.1111 so what we'll do we'll multiply these two so 1.1111 multiplied by 1.15 so the total value will be 1.2777 this means if at the beginning of year 2019 you invested dollar one by the end of 2020 your total one taka will become 1.2777 it means in two years your holding period rate of return is 27.777 which means 27.78 percent approximately so what will be the annual compound annual growth rate so if we want to calculate this holding period return into an annual return so what we need to do since we had two years so we will take to the power half minus one alternatively what we can do it was root over 1.2777 minus one so in our calculator what we will do there is a root over x button so we'll press root over x minus one so our compound annual growth rate will be 13.038 which means 13.04 percent this 13.04 is the time weighted rate of return on a yearly basis so it is nothing but the geometric mean so what time weighted rate of return calculates the time weighted rate of return takes how much will be our total value at the end of the year end of the period if i invest a taka one so if i invest a taka one at the beginning of 2019 by the end of 2020 our total value will be 1.2778 which is if my one taka grows at the rate of 13.04 percent for two years my total value of the portfolio will be 1.2778 this means the time weighted rate of return is 13.04 percent and this time weighted rate of return is not affected by the amount of the money we have invested whether we have invested 100 million 200 million 500 million 1 billion is not affected because it takes that rate of return assuming we invested dollar one so if we want to compare between different funds return you can take all the funds assuming everyone invested dollar one so how much is their compound annual growth rate so now we will calculate the money weighted rate of return in case of money weighted rate of return we have to take the actual cash flows and money weighted rate of return is nothing but the internal rate of return so how we can calculate the money weighted rate of return so at the beginning of year one which means at year zero we have invested 100 million dollar so my cash flow is negative 100 million at the beginning of year one which is at year zero by the end of the year i received three dollar invest dividend but i reinvested that which means i did not receive any money because i received three dollar and i reinvested that which means i received three dollar which is a plus and i invested that which is a minus so it's zero net off but at the beginning of 2020 or end of 2019 i invested fresh 20 million so at year one my cash flow is negative 20 and by the end of year two my total value of the portfolio is 150 which means at year zero my cash flow is negative 
100 at year 1 my cash flow is negative 20 and at year 2 my cash flow is positive 150 so how we can calculate the internal rate of return from this cash flow so let's see to calculate the internal rate of return I have to use the button of this cash flow so before that I have to press down button and if I press this cash flow you will see that there are already some value in for example you can see on the display that it is minus 1000 and if I press down arrow you will see that this is minus 2300 which means I have done some math previously and that cash flows are already stored in that so what I need to do I need to clear the cash flow first so to clear the cash flow I need to press cash flow first then second button then clear work so it will be like cash flow then second button then clear work so I'm saying again cash flow then second button then clear work so let's do that so I'll press cash flow second button then clear work so you can see on the cash flow there is no input already there so if I press down arrow you will see it's zero so now the cash flow is already cleared I have to give input for this cash flows so you can see at year zero the cash flow is minus 100 so to do that what I'll do I'll press 100 first so press 100 and I have to use this plus slash minus button so that it will show minus 100 so we should not use this minus button rather we have to use this plus slash minus button so let's press that when I do that my calculated display is showing minus 100 but I have to press enter button so remember we have to press enter button after the display showing the intended number that we need if we don't do that this cash flow will not be stored in cash flow zero so what I'll press I'll press the enter button so when I press the enter button you can see that this sign which shows that it is already stored we can check again so let's down arrow this cash flow one but if we give an up arrow you can see that cash flow zero is showing minus 100 so at year zero we have invested hundred dollar which means the cash outflow is hundred million dollar at year one by the end of the year one we have invested another 20 million dollar so again let's press down arrow first go to cash flow one which means the cash flow at the end of year one press 20 and again press plus slash minus so that the, the display showing minus 20 and remember we have to press enter so press enter so we have given input for this cash flow we have given input for given input for this cash flow now the last cash flow at year two so to do that we have to press this down arrow when we press down arrow it is showing that f01 equals to 1 this is the frequency so what does this mean and by default the frequency is 1 so what does this frequency mean for example if my cash flow it was like say at year 0 100 at year 1 say minus 20 if this minus 20 is being repeated for another for example three years so in that case rather than pressing this 20 minus 
four consecutive years we can press four here and then enter then the cash flow will assume that the minus 20 is being invested in four consecutive years that's why we knew we need that frequency four but in this particular case we have only invested twenty dollar for one single year which means this frequency will show one and we need not to do anything for this so once the frequency is showing one it is by default it will show one so then we have to press down arrow so when we press down arrow you will see that the cash flow at the end of year two and that cash flow is 150 plus so for plus we just press 150 and then again remember enter so now we have given input for all the cash flows minus 100 minus 20 minus plus 150 let's check it so I'll give up arrow so you can see the first cash flow is 100 minus the second cash flow is minus 20 third cash flow this is frequency one third cash flow is positive 150 now what I need to do I need to calculate IRR which is the internal rate of return so the internal rate of return is the rate at which if we discount all the cash flows the present value of the cash inflows and the present value of the cash outflows will be equal which means the discount rate at which the NPV will be zero so to do that we have to press IRR first and then we have to press CPT CPT means compute so we'll press IRR first then we'll press CPT so let's press IRR and then press CPT so you'll see that it takes a little bit of time and the internal rate of return is 12.88 percent so 12.88 percent is the internal rate of return which is the money weighted rate of return whereas we have calculated the time weighted rate of return which was the just over 13 percent so this is how the time weighted rate of return and the money weighted rate of return are being calculated using the financial calculator if you have any questions feel free to comment thanks for watching the video